from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications. You're watching WUFT News. This is a WUFT News update. I'm Erica Nicole. And I'm Gabriela Mercurio. Thank you for joining us for our final show this year. Just in time for the holiday season, a restless Gator Nation received a new gift with head football coach Billy Napier. WUFT's Sophia Mingoti brings us the student and alumni perspective on the recent hire. For the fourth time in 10 years, Florida has a new head football coach. Dan Mullen was dismissed on November 21st following the overtime loss to the Missouri Tigers. PhD student Clay Hurdle breaks down the red flags he saw. Bizarre comments about recruiting this year in particular when, you know, maybe he was taken out of context, maybe he wasn't. Again, you're paid millions of dollars and you're at one of the finest institutions and programs in the country. You need to know how to mind your P's and Q's. Former Louisiana Raging Cajuns head coach Billy Napier will be at the helm for Florida football starting in 2022. Like you had USC hiring Lincoln, um, Lincoln Riley and LSU hiring Brian Kelly. You know, those were some like the bigger names on the market. But I think Billy Napier can really come in and do a great job because like Dan, he is an offensive coach as well. You know, he was an offensive coordinator for Clemson and he worked under Nick Saban and Dabo Sweeney. So he's like seen two of the best coaches. During his time with the Raging Cajuns, Napier was named the top coach in the Sun Belt Conference twice in four years. Florida alum Jordan Smith says Napier understands relationship building better than Mullen. And you're recruiting guys from when they're in eighth grade, you know, ninth grade. You have to be really heavily tied into their head coaches, their parents, you know, their community leaders. So this is definitely it's a process that I think Napier is going to be really good at, but it is a process. The football recruiting class is ranked in the top 12 for the first three years of the Mullen era. The coming year projects at number 41. Recruiting might be a little shaky this year, which I think is expected with a coaching transition, but I think that we've got a solid foundation to build on. And I, I trust Coach Napier is going to work the transfer portal and bring in some some fresh guys graduating seniors that are going to really fill in some gaps for us, both on defense, offense, and special teams. Besides recruiting, Napier's resume includes coaching at notable schools such as Clemson and Alabama. Sophia Mingoti, WUFT News. Napier will be introduced in a press conference on Sunday, December 5th on UF's campus. Car dealerships are in short supply of new vehicles as computer chips essential to manufacturing remain scarce. The start of the pandemic saw a decrease in demand, so manufacturers reduced their orders for computer chips. Now they're revamping production, but not fast enough to fill dealership lots. J.D. Tomlinson says the new car shortage is spilling over to his used car dealership. Typically, they have about 215 cars on the lot. Now they are down to 100. If you drive up and down Main Street, nobody has cars. <laughs> so we've been fortunate. It's what we do. So like the new car dealers are at a big disadvantage because they basically get cars brought to them with no effort. Mm -hmm. We have to source cars regularly. So we knew what to do. It's just a lot more difficult. Tomlinson predicts with chip production slowly on the rise, the market for vehicles will eventually return to normal. In the meantime, he says he's working to maintain inventory and provide affordable cars to consumers. Still shaken by the deadly shooting in Oxford, Michigan, some schools remain closed. New threats on social media have school officials on high alert. Nearly two dozen schools in Metro Detroit area surrounding counties are closed. This will allow everyone in the process shooting and begin to heal as a community, but it will also give staff and officials time to make sure students will be safer in school. Negative chatter and unsubstantiated threats on social media caused a nearby superintendent to keep kids home. Our parents expect when they send their children to our schools that they will be safe and and this morning we were just not confident that we had enough information to be able to make that decision. Flags remain at half staff for the four dead and seven injured in the Oxford High School shooting on Tuesday. With a confirmed case in California, the Biden administration is upping safety precautions for the new COVID strain. The first patient in California is now in quarantine, but they say the symptoms are mild. In response to this new threat, President Joe Biden is extending the transportation mask mandate through mid-March. Also, anyone flying from foreign airports must text negative for COVID within 24 hours of departure. The U.S. will be rolling out free at-home testing kits. The administration is also emphasizing that people should get their vaccine shots and boosters. With a San Francisco case under close watch, a Minnesota man who recently traveled to New York City has also tested positive for the Omicron variant. 
The man attended the Anime NYC 2021 convention from November 18th to 20th. Face coverings and proof of vaccination or negative test were required to attend the event. New York's governor says the organizers have a complete list of attendees, so she expects contract tracing to move along quickly. I've been loving the cooler weather this past week. Yeah, I have been too, and I wonder how long the nice weather will last. Ashley Weinstein now joins us at the UF Weather Center. Ashley, what's this weekend looking like? I have been enjoying this fairer weather as well, and even though it is going to warm up a bit as we get into the weekend and early next work week, we are going to still have clearer conditions and nice outdoor weather. Right now by our campus cam, we could see not a cloud in sight as we near sundown, and it's just beautiful, 69 degrees, and we can thank this fair weather from this high pressure system that we have out here, drawing in those drier, fairer, clearer sky conditions. And even though there is a lot of activity to the north of us, luckily for us, this high pressure system will act as a barrier and keep all of those nastier conditions out of our way and we're in the clear temperatures right now again we're seeing low 70s high 60s in the area 68 up in jacksonville 97 or 72 in stark rather 72 in gainesville and 72 in ocala now this evening we are going to drop down and we are going to see the low 40s so if you have late night or early morning plans definitely make sure you have a jacket with you because it is going to get quite cool late night into early morning temperatures for tomorrow we see these warming up 77 in gainesville 77 in ocala and 77 in the villages so great if you have any hanukkah or holiday plans plans great weather for any outdoor activities. Again, it's warming up gradually this week. Temperatures will be reaching above average as we get into the weekend into early next week, staying dry and quiet into next week, luckily for us. Which brings me to my six day outlook where we could see for the rest of this holiday week, temperatures are in the high 70s, getting up to 80 into early next week. Now over to sports. I'm Maddie Camparisi with your sports update. Gators Volleyball is ready to dance. The orange and blue are set to take on Florida A&M in the first round of the NCAA tournament in the Stephen C. O'Connell Center. Florida's redshirt senior and All-SEC selection Tiara Caesar also announced she will be stepping away from volleyball to focus on her mental and physical health and will not be competing in postseason play. Head coach for the Gators Mary Wise said that this time of the year never gets old. Each team that is in starts the, the postseason 0-0, zero zero. but everybody is coming off of whether it's a tournament championship or a league championship or enough wins for an at-large bid. So you've got you know, 64 teams um, of the 325 women's volleyball teams that are still playing, and we're one of them, and um, this, this time of the year never gets old. Game time is set for 7 p.m. tonight, and if Florida wins, they'll play the winner of South Alabama and Miami tomorrow at 7 p.m. Both Gator men's and women's basketball fell short on the road last night. On the women's side of things, George Mason defeated the Orange and Blue 75-71. to They will be back in action on Sunday as they travel to Dallas for a Big 12 SEC matchup with Texas Christian. Moving now to the men's side of Gators hoops, they suffered their first loss of the season to the Oklahoma Sooners on the road 74-67. Their next matchup will be against Texas Southern on Monday. The MLB is in their first lockout since 1990. After more than a quarter century of peace between the league and the Players Association, the inability to come to terms on the collective bargaining agreement moving forward after its expiration on Wednesday night has put the MLB in a standstill. There are three months left until the commencement of the 2022 season with uncertainty about if and how much this lockout will cut into it. Incoming Florida football head coach Billy Napier was named Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year today. Napier led Louisiana on a program record 11 game winning streak, earning them their fourth straight Sun Belt West Division title. The Raging Cajuns also earned the right to host the Hercules Tires Sun Belt Football Championship game for the first time in program history. He will finish up the season with Louisiana before taking charge of the Gators. Now back to the desk. Thanks for keeping up with WFT News on Facebook. I'm Erica Nicole. And I'm Gabriella Mercurio. That's our time for now, but your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org.